Okay. Today we're going to show you a little bit of copy work. Um, I'm going to try to do this as a really super brief video. If you have questions, you'll have to put them in the comments. Okay, so what we're doing really quick is doing some copy work. We're taking a picture of a picture. Um, sometimes you have to do it. In this particular case, I'll show you. I've got this is the trouble candidate here. Um, customer wants a picture of this picture. Has a convex. You can see the convex shape on the front, so it makes it really shiny and glary. Makes it impossible if I take. Was she tried to take one out of the frame before? It uh, damaged it. So we don't dare take it out of the frame. We can't lay it on a flatbed scanner because it's not flat. So the only solution there is is to shoot it a picture of the picture, basically, uh, or copy work, because that's all we can do. And the negatives are long gone because this picture's over 100 years old. So what have we got? We've got a white wall, white wall in the warehouse here. It's a bright, bright white. White wall's nice because it reflects light and it lets you set the white balance easier, make sure the colors are right later on in the computer. And so white's the perfect color, either white or black. I go white in this situation. Okay, so what we've got is we've got two lights. There's a cool, this is a fluorescent light called the hot light. It's on a tripod. It's on a light stand, excuse me. It's got a soft box on it to soften the light. Instead of just a bare bulb, you've got these boxes that soften the light and broaden it so it's a more pleasing light, less harsh. So I got one on the left, one on the right. Um, aim it, aimed at the, pretty much exactly centered on this. If you'll notice, real quick, I purposely look at the shadow. This shadow is a little bit lighter, this one's a little bit darker. I've done that on purpose. If you get the lights equal distance on equal side, they'll be even. I purposely favored this side slightly because I think if you favor one side just a little bit with brightness, it makes it more three-dimensional. And since you notice his face is lit from this side in the original portrait, so having it on this side a little bit brighter than the other side makes a lot of sense. So that's an artistic choice. Come back to the camera. So what do we use for the cameras? We've got... You know, these ones are daylight balanced fluorescents, as we said, about 300 watt equivalents. They're, I think they're 30 watts fluorescent. They're equivalent to about 300 watts tungsten. Uh, daylight balanced. Okay, so here's the camera. What do we got on the camera? We've got on the front, we have uh, a polarizer. A uh, polarizer I use uh, almost all the time. It almost never comes off my camera. The polarizer in this situation is perfect because it will take this reflection it helps with the reflection on the glass uh, whenever you have glass polarizers uh, depending on the angle can help take away the glare you can't get rid of it all the time but it can help so polarizers on circular polarizer it's adjusted to take out the maximum amount of glare uh, we've got the cameras on manual focus we got the Canon 70 to 200 lens I've got it set on 125 when you do copy work, you want it somewhere between 70 and 200. Anywhere on this range would work. But I, I, my, I think 125 in this case looks the best, so that's where we're at. Um, we've manual focused it. We've adjusted the circular polarizer appropriately. Uh, I've got my cameras are kind of irrelevant because they change over time. But this happens to be the Canon 5D Mark III. It's 22 megapixel full frame sensor for anybody that cares. Um, I've got my level on here. Level helps square everything up the best we can. In this situation, it's just a guideline because that picture there isn't exactly flat on the wall. Preferably it would be, but it's hanging off the wall a little bit because it has a wire hanger. So we had to adjust that angle with this angle. So how we did that is I got half a bubble, which ends up lining up with that well. How I double checked that was I came in here. Uh, here we go, sorry. Getting used to the controls on this one. Uh, I came in here. Oh, it's actually bumped just a little. There you go. Okay, I centered it all up. I squared it all up. I focused it in camera. Uh, I zoomed in here. Ten times zoom. Made sure the eyes were sharp and everything. What I did is I also zoomed up and down real fast. I checked the top of the frame. It's nice and crisp. I checked the bottom of the frame. It's nice and crisp. That tells me that tells me that I've got the same angle as the photo. Okay? 
So we zoom back out. So in overall view, it's all squared up. I'm leaving a little bit of white around the edges so that I can adjust the, the appropriate white balance and it'll help me do the cutout and stuff I need to do in Photoshop. So give it a little bit of white room for a border. Okay, so we're pretty much set. I used ISO 100. The reason we used ISO 100, um, here's a kind of a setup shot. The reason it's on ISO 100 is you want to go as low as I, I so as you can get away with because it's uh, more sensitive to, well, it's better, you get better color, less noise. So 100 is a lot clearer than, say, 1,000 or uh, 128,000 ISO or 800, whatever you want to call it. So higher up the scale you go, the worse the quality gets. So you might as well keep it down around 100 if you have enough light, which we do. So it's going to be about a four second exposure. I chose F8 because the. Uh, long story short, F8 is about the, the crispest you can get your lens. This is one of the crispest lens, the Lazy Boy, or <laughs> Lazy Boy. It's one of the crispest lens that Canon makes, the 70 to 70 to 200 f.28. Anyway, so I got a sharp lens. Uh, to make maximum use of that sharp lens, I got F8. F5.6, F8 is where almost all lenses are their sharpest. That also sets us up what we need for depth of field. The aperture is what, this aperture setting here, it's on AV for aperture mode. That's what 99% um, of professional photographers never take it off that setting. You always use aperture, so, because your depth of field that you're trying to control more than anything that's most important in the creative side of things usually. So, the depth of field, F8 gives me enough depth of field for this situation, which is a couple inches, two or three inches, and it get, makes the lens as lens crisp as possible. So, F8 for the crispness and the depth of field we want, uh, ISO 100 for the maximum color rendition, we got the light set at daylight balance. We got the camera set at daylight balance for the white balance. We have, uh, I guess I could double check. Let me make sure. It's on automatic white balance, but um, we can adjust that real quick. We'll put it on daylight. Okay, there we go. Anyway, it gets on daylight now. But you can always adjust it with the raw files later in Photoshop. But so we got it there where we want, we got everything set, it's on, it's already been pre-focused, it's already been pre-adjusted on the thing, the circular polarizer, it's all leveled out, squared up, lights are set in such a way there's no glare on the glass, uh, got it on self-timer, you can hear it beeping, it's on self-timer and shutter lockup, self-timer makes it so when you push it, then the camera has time to settle, you're not pushing the camera around while it's taking, take a, trying to take a picture, especially with this long exposure. So, we just took it, it'll take one more to make safe. Here, the self timer going, mirror lockup going. The mirror lockup pulls the mirror up early, so you don't, the, the slap of the mirror doesn't shake the photo and make it blurry. So, mirror locked up, and self timer on, on a tripod, gives you the sharpest lens, sharpest f stop, most colorful ISO, lighting evenly lit. Uh, Plane of the camera matches plane of the plane of the copywork. So we're done. That's it. Uh, just a little quick one. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. This is where we're at. This is uh, copywork basic 101 stuff. Uh, if you have questions on the settings and why and whatever, put it in the comments. But that's kind of uh, copywork 101. So hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was helpful. See you later.